Do you see class? Or did you just see some idiot from the Midlands who's run out of interesting analogies for his car reviews? I suppose I could have just said, oh, it's like an S-Class but smaller. Though that's just obvious, isn't it? Anyway, in this video, I'm going to talk you through this car, tell you about its design, its interior, its technology, and find out what it's like to drive, and of course, test its performance. I'm Mark Watson, and you're watching CarWow. Buying a new car? Then head to CarWow, and my team will help you find your next car at a fair price. CarWow, your one-stop car buying comparison site. Let's start this video by talking about the price. Actually, I can't give you an exact price because this is actually a German car. I'm reviewing it in the UK because of COVID. I'm not allowed to go to Germany because they won't let us Britishers in. So no prices confirmed for the UK yet, but I reckon it's going to start around £35,000. However, if you want to keep up to date with the latest pricing and offers available on the new C-Class, click on the pop-out banner up there to go to CarWow. Alternatively, just Google Help Me CarWow and my team and I'll help you choose the right car for you and get it for a fair price from one of our trusted dealers. Also, we can help you sell your car now. What you have to do is upload some photos of your car, put in the details, and you'll get great offers back from our dealers for your car. And they'll buy it from you and give you the cash and take it away. Simple. Let's talk about the design. Obviously, all new car, all new body panels. Looks smart, if you ask me, and I like it in this matte grey paint. The tail lights are a bit like those on the revised E-Class. But what is this? This is a fake rear diffuser. And what is that and that? Bear with me. Don't know the CarWow sticker truth, but we have the CarWow grass straw of truth, which will reveal these are as fake as fake exhaust pipes can possibly get. And wait a minute, I'm not done. Fakery there. Oh yes, Mercedes, what are you up to? You just can't give it up, can you? Fakery is absurd. From the side, the new C-Class does look very S-Classy, doesn't it? It just does. Now this one has the 19 inch alloy wheels, which is the largest size you can get on the C-Class. They actually start 17s, which would look really, really small. Also, this design of wheel with this black insert rim kind of makes them look smaller than they actually are. What do you think about them? Let me know in the comments. So this car has this side sill here. It's got black door mirror caps. It's got rear privacy glass and black around the windows. And I guess that would be very much like the UK's AMG premium line spec, but it's actually a German spec car, which doesn't mean that it likes to go to nudist beaches of the weekend. It's just that they do slightly different specs there. Now, if you're German, you're watching this and I just offended you. Sorry. If you'd rather watch a proper German do car wire reviews, click on the pop-out banner up there to subscribe to our German car wire channel presented by a proper German. This is him doing some German stuff right now. <laughs> no idea what he said. Was it I go to nudist beaches? Probably was. Here at the front, the new C-Class looks sportier than the previous generation version. Though obviously this one is helped by the fact it's got the AMG lower bumper look with more fakery here. So like this, these little three pointed stars in the grill, very, very cool. So too are these headlights, really nice. I'll tell you more about those later. And I like the creases in the bonnet, just make it look aggressive. Here on the inside, this new C-Class is super stylish. I love the design. It looks way better than a BMW 3 Series and an Audi A4. It's sort of S-Classy, but more youthful, more sporty. For instance, these air vents on the dash, I much prefer the shape of those than the squarish ones in the S-Class and they do the same thing, you know, when you increase the temperature, you get red ambient lighting there and then when you decrease it, it goes blue and there's lots of other ambient lighting about the place with loads of different colour choices and it uses fibre optics so it's nice and bright. Great. I even like this weird trim which is sort of like one of those magic eye paintings. If you stare at it long enough, you will see a dolphin or you'll get a migraine. It's sort of carbon fibre-y but not fake carbon fibre works without looking cheap like that i like the new steering wheel as well apart from the fact that it's got touch sensitive buttons which are a bit of a fiddle to use it's a bit of a fiddle to use the climate control even though they're there on the screen the whole time yeah you can't tell that you're necessarily pressing them when you're driving you have to look down which is an ideal tell you something else that isn't ideal well like materials up here and here all feel good and you get leather as standard heated seats as well bits of this cabin feel a bit cheap scratchy muck scratch scratchy muck scratch more scratchiness and the worst bit here this and this door panel when it comes to actual build quality i think a bmw 3 series is better made and has nicer materials and if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car put in a link popping out in the top right hand corner of the screen click on that you can go watch it now can't fault this car for practicality though so underneath here you have your cup holders and they're just the right depth for your coffee cup and you can press this button as well like to hold it tightly so it doesn't spill when you're bombing through the corners you've also got some usb-c ports there and a wireless charging pad for your mobile phone but will it fit 
the big Samsung S20 Ultra in its case. Lo and behold, it does. Bet I'll forget that later. Under here, there's more storage, quite a lot of space, and there's a, a cloth there, obviously, for wiping my... No, it's for cleaning the screen. More USB connectivity in there as well. As for door bins, they're accommodating. Large bottle fits, no problem at all. As for the glove box, glove box. Come on. Oh, look, it's got that silly blooming perfume in here. Silly perfume, what's that? Mercedes-Benz, free side mood, free side. What does that even mean? It just smells sickly sweet. If that wasn't there, that would fit. Oh well. There you go, that's your practicality. Let's talk about the infotainment screen. So this is the thing that dominates the cabin. This portrait style screen, like you get in the S-Class, loads of functionality, easy to use. Mercedes latest system, very, very good. Of course, you've got Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which I'd actually just use. And you've got voice commands as well, if you dare to say, hey Mercedes. How can I help? She'll chirp up and try to help you. Set temperature to low. Think I'm of... sorry, can you say that again, please? Hey Mercedes. Hey Mercedes. How may I help you? Set temperature to low. Temperature set to minimum. How did that sound any different? Why didn't it understand the first time? Yeah, they're hitting this. I'll probably will just be pressing the button to tell you the truth. Good infotainment system though, other than that. And that brings on to this driver's display. Very clear, loads of different views for it. So you can swipe through and change the look of that, have more information, have less information. One thing he doesn't seem able to do, I don't know if it's an option and it's just not available in this car, is the 3D effect you can get on the S-Class. Shame, I love that feature. Other than that though, yeah, really nice. And driving position, plenty of adjustment. If you're big or small, you'll be able to see out. No problem at all. Oh, and look, it's not bad. An electrically operated steering wheel column on a C-Class. Someone's probably typing going, Matt, they always had that. It's just BMW and Audi that doesn't do it. I can't remember, sorry. I can't, I, I can't know everything. The interior coolness extends all the way into the back of the C-Class. I love the design of the doors and the armrests. And quality is generally good back here, though once again, there are a few cheap feeling bits and pieces about the place. Hmm. In terms of the space, they've actually increased the size in terms of knee room and headroom. Not so knee room's good. Headroom, I'm average height. In fact, I'm very average. I'm surprised so many of you watch these videos. Anyway, average height, and I've just about got enough headroom. People over six foot might find it a bit tight, but it could be due to the fact we've got the glass roof, which you can't see because we've got the blinds up because it's just too bright. The seats themselves are nice and comfy, and I love the actual pattern on them, and the leather's really soft. Now, if you need to carry three people at once in the back, there's always that problem with these kind of cars, or big hump in the floor, which you have to straddle. And the middle seat is a bit of a perch, so you end up then touching your head on the roof. As for the rest of the car in terms of practicality, so airplane style folds on the seat backs, they're nice. Big door bins. You've got an armrest here with no cup holders in the way, so when you rest your arm on it, it is comfortable. Instead, look, your cup holders are here. And there's this little slot there for a mobile phone. Your phone won't fit in there if you've got it in a case, otherwise it would do. Wait a minute, that's a bit weird. These look like the eyes of a robot. Speaking of which, these air vents and the climate control here for the back looks like the face of the robot from Futurama, Bender. Anyhow, <laughs> if you want to carry longer items, you can fold this down, have two people either side, no problem at all. And the eyes fix anchor points have these really cool covers where you can just push the seat into place like that. And then when you want to cover them back up again, you just press there. So no need to lose the eyes fix anchor covers at all. And there should be enough space back here to even fit a bulky rear facing child seat. Are you ready to see the new C-Class's boots? Let's be honest, it's why you're all really here. Let's do it. Wow, there it is. Saloon boot. Slightly awkward shape because of the curved rear end. Some storage under here. Ah, look. And the classic, the Mercedes crate. <laughs> storage nets, tie down points, hawks to hang things off. An okay square shape in there, so you should be able to fit quite a lot of stuff in it. However, in terms of outright capacity, 455 litres. Whereas an Audi A4 and a BMW 3 Series, the boot capacity on those cars, 480 litres. So if you're playing a game of boot top trumps, you're gonna lose with this car. And that brings us to five annoying things about the new C-Class. Those shiny vents on the dash may look cool, but they reflect quite badly in the windscreen, which is a bit distracting. This matte paint looks cool, but it does chip quite easily. Look, there's a stone chip on this one already, and it's quite hard to fix. Also, for bird poos on it, the acid in the birds dropping can eat into the paint quite easily. So you have to wipe it up as soon as it lands, which you can't do if it's parked and you leave it. 
Oh dear. The car's key is big, shiny, and ow, heavy. So it feels expensive in your hands. The only problem is it feels a little bit too weighty and cumbersome in your pocket. I mean, look at that. Am I pleased to see you, or have I just got a Mercedes C-Class key in my pocket? While many of the engines from the previous C-Class are carried over to this new one, there is one that they're not taking across, and it's the one that everyone loves. It's the 4-litre twin-turbo V8 from the C63. Apparently, the new C63 will be a four-cylinder hybrid. The previous generation C-Class was unique in its segment for being available with all-round air suspension, which is the kind of thing you normally find on bigger, more luxurious cars. However, they've stopped that. It's now just coil spring on the saloon. That's all you get, coil springs, traditional old school method of suspending, I'm just waffling now. Get out. Thankfully, this car has plenty of cool features to help make up for all this. Here's five. All versions of the C-Class come with mild hybrid technology. So they improve the efficiency of the stop-start system and allow you to coast when you're slowing down. Also, adds a bit of an extra boost when you put your foot down. So for very short periods, the little electric motor, which is part of the mild hybrid system, can give you an extra 200 newton meters of torque. And FYI, that's the same amount of pulling power that you get from a one liter turbo Volkswagen Golf. Are you too posh to tug on manual releases to lower the seat backs in your saloon car? Well, don't worry. You can get electric releases here in the C-Class. Ta-da. Just look at the incredible definition you get on the surround view cameras. And of course, you can look all around the car if you want to. Come on, let's have a look see around. But what's that there? That's the bottle of water from earlier. Although it looks like it's been flattened. Anyway, you get the general idea. Not only has the new C-Class got an airbag between the two front seats, so the driver and the front passenger don't bang their heads together in the event of a collision, there's also airbags on the outer portion of the seats to push the seats inwards in case the car gets hit from the side. Not only can this new infotainment system receive over-the-air updates like your mobile phone, it can also connect to home smart devices through the voice command. So I could say, hey Mercedes, how may I help you? Is there a thief in my house? And it should be able to connect to my home security system and let me know. I'm sorry, can you say that again please? I don't think this one is connected to my home security I'm system. Sorry, but I shut up, I'm trying to talk to the people. Right shut, shut up, go away, shut up, go away, clear, go, bye, bye, bye. Right, engines, let's do this, dead simple. Turbo petrols or two litre four cylinder. So in the C200, you have 204 horsepower. In the C300, you have 258 horsepower. Diesels, once again, all two litre four cylinder. In the C220D, you have 200 horsepower. In the C300D, you have 265 horsepower. Then there's a C300E, which is a plug-in hybrid. You get the two litre four cylinder, 204 horsepower petrol motor, plus an electric motor with 129 horsepower, a 25 kilowatt hour battery pack, which will give you a range of electric only power of up to 62 miles. All right, let's go for a little drive in this new C-Class. And the first thing I want to tell you about is how you can get it with rear wheel steering, which makes it more maneuverable than ever. So mini roundabout, can I circumnavigate it like a complete and utter pilchard? Come on, hopefully nothing comes out of the main Mercedes gate. Yes, I'm filming at Mercedes headquarters I'm in the sorry. UK. Yes, be sorry because you interrupted me. I'm sorry, but I can't and help you with that right now. But you can interrupt me, can't you? Anyway, I'll tell you what's even more annoying than her is the fact that you can't get the rear wheel steering in the UK. Why? Right, let's move on. Let's address the first issue I raised, the fact you can't get this car with air suspension anymore. But does it need it? Well, this one is fitted with the adaptive dampers and I've got the car set in comfort mode. And you know what? It's actually very comfy and it does that kind of floaty thing that you get from an S-Class, which feels expensive, but it does make me wonder just how tied down this car will be when I start to push it through some corners or because I'm in Milton Keynes, some roundabouts because they have a lot of roundabouts here because being the c-class it's supposed to feel more sporty than the s-class obviously and the steering in comfort mode is pretty light but it's direct and it puts the car where i want it to i am going to now just move into sports mode in fact let's go the whole hog sports plus and see what it feels like around this roundabout do you know what it stays fairly flat in the turns yet it doesn't feel like the suspension is that hard even in the sports plus mode 
still good over bumps or whatever a few bumps then and it was absolutely fine that's impressive right that's enough of that let's go straight ahead now another new thing on this car is the cruise control it's automated it'll steer to keep you in lane keep your safe distance from the car in front but you can use it just on normal roads like this and in town it can still figure out where it is doesn't need such clear white lines it's really quite good if you want to let the car do most of the work in all environments not just the motorway i like that i'm just going to disengage it now because i need to test the car and have a feel of what it's like oh well, that's annoying the indicator has the windscreen wipers and it's easy to just flip it like that so what's also annoying don't know if you can hear this very hot day so i've got the air conditioning on it's on the lowest setting yet the vent's quite noisy which is a shame because the rest of the car is actually quite quiet hardly any road noise or wind noise the only thing i can hear is this when i put my foot down that diesel just doing what a diesel engine does but it's not as gravelly as some diesel engines i'll tell you that and it does pick up really nicely actually so let's move back into comfort mode because i think that's what this car is all about and it's such a relaxing thing to drive nice and chilled i like this you could do a long distance in this car and the seats are lovely as well they've nailed this car in terms of how comfy it is to drive and yeah it doesn't feel all lollopy in the bends either it's quite sharp not quite sporting as a bmw 3 series but not far off i'm impressed right i'm gonna launch this car this c220d should do 0 to 60 in 7.3 seconds specialist timing gear here let's see what happens come on what are we gonna get 7.2 seconds a little bit quicker than this head overall though this car is deeply impressive to drive in fact it's very much a lovely thing one small thing i'm noticing as i'm looking that way that you can't see these pillars quite a blind spot other than that as i said lovely So then, what's my final verdict on the new Mercedes C-Class? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, if you want the comfiest and most high-tech car in its class, this is the one you want. So go right ahead and buy the new C-Class. Hope you'll enjoy the video. If you did, please give it a like. In return, I'll give you access to my favorite nudist speech. Let me know what you think of this car in the comments below. And if you click on those windows there, you can watch some more videos. And if you click on that box there, you can go to CarWow and we'll help you sell your old car and get a great price for it.